That's exactly right. She doesn't need to. You know, what's so interesting about this conversation is that two days ago, I heard from strategists, even in our own party, who were saying, oh, my God, she shouldn't be talking about, you know, the negativity of Donald Trump. She needs to focus on herself. She needs to bring the joy back. Now that she's brought the joy back, you have people saying, oh, well, she should be making the contrast. I think they have run this campaign incredibly well, and they have the data, they understand what people want, and to your point, when you have Donald Trump filleting a microphone and talking about how they want, he wants to shoot uh, Liz Cheney and talking about how happen. Puerto Rico is an island of trash. He didn't say that. 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 Okay. That she, there was another that, analogy that he was making about Liz Cheney. That she should face a firing squad. That's not that. better. He didn't say she should face a firing squad. But anyway, hold on one second. What I'm saying is that he doesn't need to make We talked about this on Friday. Can we do a correction here, Abby? I'm trying to. I'm sorry. Are you the host? I'm trying to if you would let me talk. Look, the... The comments that he made about Liz Cheney, as we discussed on the show on Friday after he made them, he talked about how uh, if she's sending people to war. How would she feel if there were guns pointed at her? Those comments were not appropriate. They weren't a firing squad, but they were also not appropriate. But what is your... On you the, were saying that she yeah, is, on, she's running on a negative campaign. They're, well, they're, they're actually pivoting into yeah. the final stages right now, yes, and yes, that's the message. Yes, here with a, a handful of hours to go. I mean, she doesn't have to attack Donald Trump, I guess, because she's done it every single day of the campaign since she got into it. It's been a relentlessly negative and relentlessly dishonest campaign. And here at the end, they want credit for trying to be positive and, and unifying after a week of... Republicans are Nazis. Republicans are garbage. Republican women are weak and stupid. So I, I get it. I understand why they would want to tout this one time that she didn't relentlessly go negative and dishonest against Donald Trump. But to me, the bulk of the campaign is obvious. It is they are betting all their chips on there's just enough people in the country who hate or are willing to fear Donald Trump to win. That's about all they've got. So wait, are, is the pro hold on. One, is the problem... The negativity and the dishonesty, because if that were the case, then I would expect you to criticize Trump for that, too. Uh, look, I, I think Donald Trump has run a campaign of some negativity and also some of what I want to do. Some negativity. And I think Kamala Harris has been frightfully vague so do you about think what that she wants been, to do. Who's been more negative, Kamala Harris or Donald Trump? Harris. Without question. Oh, come on, Scott. <laughs> so Scott are you Scott, serious? I, I, you, I, I, I think that you are a very good representative of conservatives who uh, are more aligned with Trump, obviously, than Harris. But I think that it would be dishonest to not acknowledge that Donald Trump goes up on that stage almost every day. He doesn't even focus on his opponent's policies. He calls her stupid mm -hmm. every day. I, I think it would every be... Every day, literally I, every day. And, and, and I personally think it would be dishonest not to acknowledge that the bulk of the attacks that Kamala Harris lodges against Donald Trump range from basically dishonest to absolutely, I can't believe they're getting away with this dishonest on policy, on, on all sorts of things. And I just, I, I feel like this goes unacknowledged because of how Trump operates. And I fully admit that he says things that get our attention and that, that sound outrageous. And incredibly but negative. we but we don't hold her to the same level of accountability. And the because bulk of their campaign against Trump has been ahead, a it's been she sits on a throne no. of dishonesty when it comes to his agenda. He did not write Project 2025. Oh, he did not put it in a book. He does not hand it out. And that is the bulk of their campaign, and it's ridiculous. Well, well, he did do Agenda 47, which is actually... Come on. Well, no, that's his. That's his. It's on his website, Agenda yeah, 47. Yeah, but it's not no, no, this it's like, book and that it's they worse. keep talking about. And it's worse than <laughs> the book. It's like, I, I Why? Thought, but they, well, because all the stuff that people are mad about in Project 2025, the worst of it is actually in Agenda 47. If you're at home, yeah. please Google it. Here's, but here's what, <laughs> here's what I would say. Um, you're frustrated with Kamala Harris, you somehow think she's been given some kind of a cakewalk. I see it very, I, <laughs> yes. see, I see it very differently. If Kamala Harris were saying and doing the things that Donald Trump is doing, mm. can you imagine a black woman saying the things that Donald Trump says, doing the things that Donald Trump does? I just, it, it's, it's inconceivable. She, she would be polling at like 2% yeah. in, our, in our party. And so I just think that we're kind of through the looking glass. Different people see it different ways. I think it's very hard to argue that Donald Trump, that, that anybody but Donald Trump can get away with the stuff he's, he's doing. But we're talking about how, we, how we're closing. I just want to get back to that. Kamala Harris has made a decision that she wants to close on a positive message. She keeps being accused that she's, she's too vague. Mm -hmm. She did a two-week 
tour, hitting every uh, media outlet that she could. She put out actual concrete proposals and policies after policies after policies after. She was, it was like she, she turned into Hillary Clinton for about two weeks. Yeah. People still t said she was being too vague. And now she's turning to being, being more positive. I'm not sure that that's a great idea. But I trust, I, I, because, I tell you why, because I, uh, Scott thinks that we, we've been too nice to Donald Trump. I, I think we should be harder on go Donald hard, Trump. Go hard, go hard, go home. But, 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 but <laughs> I do, I, I think we should be, I think we should. I think we but should. but does, does, yes. do you think there is a single voter out there who has not yet heard enough negativity about Donald, like one more negative thing would help you win? I, I will talk about it well, in my hot take. Let me let me ask. Well, <laughs> I, I, I think that's a good question for Chris. I, mean, I remember when we after the, um, the the town hall that we did with Harris, there was there were a bunch of Pennsylvania voters, and several of them were like, "Enough with the negativity. We are tired of hearing negative yeah, things." Yeah, yeah. Even though negativity does work, it does work. I mean, is it wise for her to go positive at this stage? Uh, I think so, in part because I think voter views of Donald Trump are so well established. People know how they feel about him. And we have been sitting around tables like this for eight, nine years now, mm -hmm. where Donald Trump says something nutty and everybody goes, is this the thing that's going to make everybody not like him anymore? And every single time his numbers barely budge. They budged after something big like January 6th. Mm -hmm. But him standing up at a rally and saying something nutty yet again doesn't move it. And so that's why I think for Harris, the question for voters who go, oh, I hate this election, is can she cross a threshold yes. of credibility? Right. Can she cross a threshold of, okay, fine, maybe I could live with her as president for four years for these remaining double can hater I, voters. Can I ask but, you something, Scott? Yes. I mean, you, you put an uh, op-ed out this past week saying that you will be voting for Donald Trump. I don't think viewers yeah. of this program will find that to be a huge <laughs> surprise. But, um, but you also, years ago, said that he was responsible for yeah. an insurrection. So how do you square that in your mind? Yeah, well, as I wrote in the L.A. Times, uh, I look, I was none too pleased with him about that. But there's been other things, too. I mean, you know, we've had our ups and downs. I don't like the things he says about Mitch McConnell. There's a lot of issues. But, you, but what I but chose just to, to be clear on the insurrection part, you said he was responsible yeah, for it. Yeah. Um, I don't. I mean, he's been mean to Mitch. He's been mean to a lot of people. But yeah. an insurrection is a big deal. Yeah. That's I, a, that's a significant thing. And and what I decided to do in this election was focus on the future. Who do I think would take the country and the government in the basic direction in which I want to go? And yeah, he's going to do things I don't approve of, and he has done things I don't approve of in the past. But most of the time, a government that he would build would probably do most of what I want. And I think none of the time that's true for Harris. She's given Republicans like me, who don't really come from the MAGA wing of the party, absolutely nothing. And just to put a point on what I said earlier, the headline that I woke up to this morning in Axios was the no comment candidate. Harris strategy clouds how she'd govern. She doesn't want voters to know whether she would stick to her old liberal views or govern with new centrist thinking. I'm a Republican. I'm a conservative. How can I entrust my vote with someone who won't even tell me whether they have a conservative yeah. view? That's 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 One thing which is so, so, so important, if you have your vote, um, don't listen to any of the nonsense, as I said, that's being spoken. 17 million people have already exercised their right to vote. Uh, Tuesday the 5th, make sure if you can vote, you do vote. Simple as that. Um, I think we're living in a parallel universe, by the way. Caitlin Collins is doing a great job. Uh, quite a few people on CNN and MSNBC are putting some facts out there, um, telling the truth. There is a situation in what we would call the parallel universe. I know. We're on planet Earth. Who knows? Who knows what planet the... I don't know what we should call them. Those at Fox Entertainment exist on. Uh, clearly on the 5th, there isn't just... Um, it's my son at the side of it. Uh, there isn't just the election which is going on for uh, the President of the United States of America. There's also various uh, votes for senators and uh, representatives, etc. Congress people, congressmen and women. Uh, one of them is this buffoon. Well, that's being nice about it. Mike Lawler is just... Hmm, I don't know what word we can use which is polite. There's no word. 
Okay, twat works. In yeah, no question. And these are the issues that when I'm in my district, most people are talking about. So but I know we try to focus on some of the issue to voters. It's not some side issue that that doesn't matter. And yeah, but we we it, have we have people like Jamie Raskin. We have people like Jamie Raskin who in 2017 voted against certification and now just even this past week talking again about not certifying a Donald Trump election. This is this but is a fundamental problem we see across the we see from no, Maryland whoa, wait a minute, to wait a, minute. A, a concerted no. effort by Republicans in the House and the Senate and states across this country to try to overturn the vote. And only one candidate has done that. And it wasn't Joe Biden. It wasn't Caitlin, Kamala Harris. Caitlin, it was Donald Trump. Respectfully, respect, respectfully, we have seen going back to George W. Bush. We have seen Democrats Not vote against certification. Not on the same scale. It's a false equivalency. We have seen, we have seen after 2016, Democrats saying that Donald Trump's election was illegitimate and saying that it was Russia that put him in. And Hillary that Clinton conceded that election. Uh, the fact well, we is, watched it. So uh, it's but, just, she it's not, president, the but she said he was an illegitimate president. But she said he was an ill. Caitlin, and did she Caitlin. did she say maybe I she shouldn't said go to the he White was House an illegitimate and president. I'm going to do this? The I think that's what line, people are looking at here. here. Trump is repeating it. Even Caitlin, today, I know, but, but Congressman, I, know you I, I want to ask you because you're talking Caitlin. about 48 hours from now. Uh, let me. I want to ask you this because yeah. what happens on Tuesday?